So in this video, I'm going to cover one of the most basic things about design, but it's also one of the most important when it comes to making your work look professional, and that's properly kerning the letters of whatever font it is you're using. So I typed out a couple different things here. The one on the top here is in the font Bebas, or maybe Bebas, and this one right here is called College Condensed. I will link both of these fonts in the description if you want to kind of practice this on your own or use these fonts on a project. So a few things you want to have open here. You want to make sure your character window is open. It's right here on my screen. So if I go to Window and then Type, which is near the bottom, just make sure Character is checked and available. And also once you open up that character window, there's a little drop down box in the upper right hand corner with a down arrow next to four lines. Just click that and make sure it says Hide Options. If you don't see everything I have right here, just click on Show Options. For the purpose of kerning, you don't need all these, but sometimes being able to adjust things like horizontal scale or vertical scale of the letters is pretty helpful, so I just try to always make sure that, that is open when I'm working. Another thing that I'm going to have open here just to show for the purpose of this tutorial is the Align window. You don't need this open to kern most of the time, but there's an interesting thing in it called Distribute Spacing that comes in helpful sometimes, so just make sure Window and then Align is checked. And once you open up a line, it'll probably look like this by default. Once again, just hit that down arrow with the four lines. And if it says show options, click it because we're going to use this distribute spacing right here at the bottom on this collegiate style typeface just as a very quick and rough way to kind of kern things up a little bit. So right here is the font typed out without any kerning done whatsoever. And something to kind of keep in mind with a lot of fonts, sometimes people will space things like mathematically perfectly. So they'll make the exact same distance from the bottom of this K to the E, and then make that exact same spacing from the E to the R. And I'm actually going to show this align trick to kind of show you why you shouldn't do that most of the time. So I'm going to bring this down by holding Alt and Shift. Holding Alt or Option on a Mac while you're dragging something just duplicates it, and holding Shift makes sure it's on the same vertical line. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create outlines and I'm also going to right click once again and ungroup it. This way I can individually go through and move all these letters on their own if I wanted to. That's actually how I kern a lot of the time if I don't have to keep the font live. Sometimes you need to be able to keep the font live so you can make adjustments later. If you can't, being able to just use the arrow keys on your keyboard to kind of shift things backwards and forwards is a lot quicker than going through tracking and tracking everything individually. But just to show you why you don't want to use a mathematical kerning style, at least on most fonts, I'm going to highlight over all this and then in my align window under distribute space right here there's something called horizontal distribute space I'm gonna click that so what that does is it makes the distance between each letter at least the furthest point in each letter absolutely perfect so looking at this font right here some of them look okay like this last section right here that I'm highlighting looks pretty good it looks decent I might move this G in just a little bit but for very boxy or rectangular letters it does a great job of making everything very consistent and look very consistent but letters like the K and the R they don't look like they're current properly because the visual weight of the letter isn't on the edge right here, whereas the visual weight of a letter like an N is very consistent throughout. It's a rectangle in its shape, it's very simple, so the visual weight throughout is consistent. But any letter that has a part of the foot that kind of sticks out a little bit further, you tend to need to throw that in a little bit closer. That way it tends to look a little bit better, a little bit more balanced, as you actually start pushing these letters together. So I'll move this R in a little bit. So I always keep in mind with letters that have a portion that sticks out further than the rest of the letter. So think of letters like K's or R's, things like that that aren't balanced typically perfectly on their own, that you want to usually tend to push them in just a little bit further than you would otherwise to make sure that this looks visually good. So I'm actually going to move this back just a little bit and try to get this looking somewhat decently for the purpose of this. I just use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move the letters backwards and forwards as I'm actually looking at them once I've ungrouped this. If I use tracking, it's a little bit slower process. And I also tend to zoom out a whole lot so I can get a better look at the overall appearance letter and how it looks. And then I zoom back in and kind of check things out once again to see where I need to push stuff in a little bit further or pull stuff out, kind of depending on how the overall letter looks here. The other way you can do this is with tracking. So the tracking right here, it looks like a VA with a letter pointing left as well as right. And by default, tracking on something is set to zero. If I highlight just one letter, I can then change the tracking. So if I make it, let's say 100, it increases that distance quite a bit. If I make it negative 100, it'll close that up a whole bunch. So a negative number in tracking pulls things together where a positive number starts to push them out a little bit further. And you can also hit these little arrow buttons right here to manually go in there and kind of adjust how these look, which is something that I tend to do a whole lot. And whenever you select a letter, it'll affect the tracking between that letter and whatever letter is in front of it. So if I adjust the tracking on, let's say, this G, it wouldn't have any effect as there's nothing in front of it for it to track closer or further away from. 
And the reason you would do this with tracking instead of just outlining it and then moving it manually is if at any point in time you think this might have to get changed or if you're sending this to a client who might have to go in and make changes on their own in the future, you want to make sure this is still live so they can edit it if it is needed to be edited. And also when you're adjusting the tracking here, you can type in your own number. I tend to work in groups of five. I think this is a personal preference where I'll change it from 50 to 55. If that's still not working, I might just highlight this and change it to 60 until it gets pretty close to how I think it should look. But you can also use the arrow keys to move it up or down, as I said before, if that's how you want to work. And typically you can usually kind of just take a guess, see how it looks, and then kind of modify it depending on if it looks right or wrong to you. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on any of these trying to make them absolutely perfect. But in general, just keep making tiny adjustments, seeing how it looks until you get the overall word looking the way you want it to look. Like this is relatively close to being good. I might move this K in just a tiny bit further. Let's say 52 but you get the general idea. Always zoom out and then back in, kind of take a look at it. And a lot of times, if it's a really important project, just step away from it for like an hour or even 10 minutes and then open the file back up and take a look again. And part of the reason I had you open up a line with the distribute spacing option is for collegiate style fonts because most collegiate style fonts tend to be built on a very rectangular grid. So actually using that align function is a really quick and dirty way to get the kerning on your letters pretty decent very quickly. And then you can just make some minor adjustments after that. Just make sure that you right click the font, create outlines, and then once it's outlined, you right click that font again and then click ungroup. So here I purposely made this word look really bad so I can just apply this distribute spacing option with it. Once again, that's under window align. And just make sure if you don't see this bottom portion right here, click on this down arrow with the four lines and make sure you hit show options. If show options is already on, it'll say hide options. So with this selected using the direct selection tool, which is the black arrow or V on your keyboard as a shortcut, I'm going to go to align and then distribute spacing, horizontal distribute space. When I click that, you can tell it does a pretty decent job of getting the kerning in a lot better shape. Sometimes though, you do have to go in and still make adjustments like how this R is curved in quite a bit further than the foot of the R. I might want to bring this N in just a little bit to kind of make this look a little bit more balanced here. Some of these letters just aren't going to be inherently great to balance because this R does have this slope that almost no other letter in this thing has. And also I'm going to type out a word that uses a Y at the end just so you can kind of see the inherent problems of a letter like a Y that's very top heavy. So I'm just going to outline this and then ungroup it. I'm going to push stuff in a little bit closer because I don't want this quite so distant. And once again, I'm going to hit that horizontal distribute space under a line. So right here, what it did, and this is something to really watch out for, is that it's just looking to make the space between each letters for this point mathematically perfect. So mathematically perfect typically doesn't mean visually perfect. So always think about that where the word sill of silly looks really good. Like all these would be perfectly good to go with the Y is judging between the end of this L and then the top of the Y here. So when it makes that the same distance as let's say an L to an L visually, it looks really wrong. So you want to make sure you keep track of that and then adjust accordingly. So I'm actually going to bring this in quite a bit here. So that the actual distance between the Y and the L is similar to the other letters here. So this way it looks visually much more balanced, even if mathematically it's no longer balanced, like mathematical kerning is almost always the wrong way to do it, unless you're working with a font that's literally all just square shapes or rectangle shapes or something like that, where every letter of the font is almost identical with just small like indent changes, stuff like that. But those fonts aren't very common. So really always look at it and use your eye to make adjustments. So you don't get too caught up in the idea of making everything mathematically perfect or working on a grid where tricky letters like Y will really tend to screw you up. But that's just the basics of kerning. And keep in mind that kerning is a very subjective kind of thing. What you think looks good, someone else might think needs a little bit of adjustment. That's just kind of the way it goes with stuff like kerning. But the one thing that's important is at least spending some time kerning and making sure you do your best on everything will give a project a much more professional feel. A lot of times someone will make something really, really cool and then they'll just slap a font on top of it that hasn't been touched or kerned at all. And instantly a project that could have been very professional and very cool looking looks extremely amateur because that little bit of extra time to go in there and kind of kern things up make things look visually consistent wasn't taken. And in design, sweating over the small details is oftentimes the thing that makes the biggest difference in the overall quality of the work that you produce. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. And once again, keep in mind, while I personally tend to outline things and move things with the arrow keys a whole lot when I'm kerning, it's just a faster way for me to work. If you think at any time someone will have to go in here and make adjustments, maybe even do something as drastic as change a word, do it using the tracking right here. It's the VA on your character panel. 
and use the tracking to make individual adjustments between each of these letters, or at the very least, save a copy of that font as it's typed out so you don't go back to it in like six months and you're like, I don't know what font this is because I outlined it, I can't make adjustments, I need to make a change, and I don't know where to start. Stuff like that can be really frustrating and lose a lot of time. So always at least save one live copy of that type and make sure that you save it so that in the future, either you or someone else who has to touch the project isn't left kind of stranded if all the fonts end up being outlined. But if you found this video helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep design content like this coming out every week. Thank you so much for watching.